Here's a little song about an innocent maid, consequently the pre war song. What she didn't do was not because she was afraid, she was just so dumb that no one did her wrong. That's another proverb that you can't despise. Where ignorance is bliss, it is poised to be wise. She was brought up on suggestions that all men were charming, knew not the questions, far less the answers, and she was 21 somehow. And before she got much older, somebody caught her. Somebody told her, somebody taught her. On the day that the lady of the world, when she went for walks with fellows, where she nearly was a ball. All their usual opening gadgets she would blatantly ignore. The chap said that he wanted her. She used to ask, what for? She knows all the answers now. She was scared of mathematics, simple sums she couldn't do. In fact, until a cute accountant taught her just a thing or two, she always thought twice one made three. Poor kid, she never knew, but she knows all the answers now. A fellow studying medicine, whom she loved with all her might, and once asked if she slept well, as if not, he'd see her right. She lost interest when she told him that she slept through every night. But she knows all the answers now. Judging by her figure, judging by her look, she certainly was anything but shy. And it wasn't for the want of reading lots of naughty books that every innuendo passed her by. And maybe this very innocent, as verse one says, saved her from the fate that's worse than death. She was brought up on suggestions that all men were chances. She knew not the questions and far less the answers that she was 21 somehow. Before she got much older, as somebody caught her, as somebody told her, somebody taught her, today that this lady is a wow. A keen youth used to take her out to dinner for a bit. When he asked her what she'd have to drink to buck her up, she said, and calmly order lime juice, which did just the opposite. Um, but she knows all the answers now. When questions were wished for post, the manager began. I must know your past experience before the job is won. What positions have you been in? She primly pouted none. Um, but she knows all the answers now. A rich prince once proposed to her, but a shake of balls. He promised her a fortune, his art cool, because she said, I'm not that sort of girl, though by that time she was. But she knows all the answers now. She was brought up on suggestions that all men were chances. She knew not that question, well, it's the answers, because she was 21 somehow. Before she got my shoulder, somebody caught her, somebody told her, and somebody told her, today that little lady is a wow. For she went once to a fellow's flat, the day was far from hot. He said, you take your coat off, and he put her on the spot. She thought that she'd be very cold, but found out she was not, so she knows all the answers now. That's a ridiculous song. In fact, it's perfectly preposterous. She should have known the law. But actually, such innocence is frightfully out of date. Well, here's the pattern. Uh, the other morning I said to my wife, whoever it was, I must do something more for the war, for the boys. I'm thinking of the chaps in the East, the Near East, the Middle East, the Far East. The East said soon is mended, murmured my wife, whoever it was. I laughed unmercifully. What is it our airmen and soldiers want most, I went on. She told me. I know I answered, but I can't do anything about that. And then I remembered my own war in Mesopotamia, and I suddenly exclaimed, Flies! She misunderstood me and suggested that that was the last thing the troops wanted. I explained that that was the point. They had too many in all these. And don't the beastly insects not only swarm on one's food and become the biter's blight, but also out there the blighter's bite. And, I added, they also carry disease in their proboscis. She had a wrong guess as to what their proboscis were, and then I expanded on my plan. I will send out thousands of fly papers, enough for every unit everywhere. They're not expensive, they're not rationed, they will be the ideal comfort. Now, now once I get a fly in my bonnet, I'm a perfect bee. And so I buzzed off as soon as I was dressed and went to every vendor of fly papers in London, and when the supplies were delivered at the flat, they completely filled the lounge. And the next thing to do was to arrange for their delivery to the different east. I rang up the war office and the air ministry and asked about the number of men in the various places. And that once gave me the information. And my wife, whoever it was, and I wrote out hundreds of labels and things addressed to the various units and squadrons. 
And the next thing to do was to interview the Board of Trade, who were very, very what? Very Board of Trade. <laughs> and sent me to the shipping ministry, who were half seas over, and blankly refused to consider my filling up valuable ship space with what they dared to call frivolous gifts. Well, I explained my motive, the extermination of a noxious and dangerous insect, and when the troops got them, the flies would be done. The gentleman simply replied that the flies must remain undone. So I gave him a glimpse bye-bye, which is a very senior soldier's farewell, and turned to my wife, wherever it was, with misery written all over my cup. Well, together we looked at the stacks of fly papers, which still filled the lounge. What can we do with them, I asked her. She told me. And that's what we did. As an extra anti-blast precaution, we stuck them up on every window throughout the whole block of flats. That's the end of the pattern. Here's the box. Three little lap girls were weeping. They looked as depressed and as sad, as if they'd lost something worth keeping, which indeed they most probably had. An old man approached them and tallied. His minds and intentions were clean, as the poor woman whom he had married complained that they always had been. He looked at the three sniveling faces, and without a mere glance at their legs, said, Ladies, I'm taking you places, and not only for tea, but for eggs. At the word eggs, they all ceased to holler. In fact, their sadness, they seemed to repent. And with a glance at his old-fashioned collar, uh, they said they would go, and they went. Once there, he said, and wasn't shouting, you're three good little girls, I can see. And they started, came faithfully laughing, when the waitress came in with the tea. The bloke looked from one to the other, and then said in a manner in name, Now which of you is going to be mother? And they all started crying again.